G'day, Ben here from on3legs.com. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Photomatix Pro 5.0.5, and we're going to create a HDR image. So I've been shooting HDR now for several years, and I've tried all different software uh, programs, and I find Photomatix Pro to be the best. If you want to download a free trial of Photomatix, you can. There's a link in the description below this video uh, where you can get a free trial. It just puts a watermark on the image, but at least then you can sort of have a play along as well as I show you in the video. Um, if you do decide you want to buy Photomatix, you can use the code ON3LEGS, which is with the number three, so ON3LEGS, one word, and you'll get 15% off, which is, uh, I know it's not a lot, but better than a poke in the eye with a tripod leg. So let's get stuck into it. So um, the whole, whole idea of HDR is that you take several images, typically, uh, from a high sort of contrast scene, and you then merge them into one image. And that captures all the light from the different images and makes one image that's more appealing or more like what the eye can see. Now, I've, I've got this image here. There's eight exposures, and I've exported these as a TIFF from uh, from Lightroom. And although with this new version of Photomatix, you can actually have a uh, in your menu, you can go to Edit In or Export To, and choose Photomatix in the menu from Lightroom, and it'll just export your images straight into to Photomatix, so you don't have to worry about uh, opening them up separately. Um, but I've got these eight images. I'm just going to hit the load load button, and you can see there, there's my eight TIFF files. And I press OK, and you'll see that it's asking me about different options now, merge to HCR. Now, the first option allows me to align the image sources. So if I handheld the image, or if I know my camera moved during taking the photo, I could say align source images. Um, don't tick this box unless you've handheld. It's not to align things that moved in your image. It's more to align your image if you moved as you took the photos. Um, I uh, I shot with a tripod, so we don't need to tick that. Second one says show options to remove ghosts. Now they only check that option if something did move something. So, sorry, if something did move through your photo as you took it. So a pe person might have been walking, or a car might have been driving, or a tree might have been moving around because of the wind. Well, that's when you tick that. So once again, this image, I don't need to do that. Um, next option, which is the third option, says reduce reduce noise. And when you tick this box, it lets you choose whether you reduce it on all of them or just some of the exposures, and what strength, I like to use 125% if I'm going to use it, but in this case I'm not going to use it, and then reduce chromatic aberrations. You tick that uh, because quite often we're shooting in a high contrast scene, and that can create chromatic aberrations, and just so you know what that is, if you zoom into 200% on a photo and you see a green line on the edges, or a magenta line, or like a glow on the edges, that's chromatic aberrations. And what Photomatix tries to do is remove that for you uh, when you tick that box. Just keep in mind, if you tick any of these boxes, you're going to take longer. I'm going to keep them all unticked. I'm going to hit Merge to HDR. It's now taking those eight files, and it's getting the best pixels from each file to make one image. Uh, it's it's putting them all together, and it's taking you know it's going to make the image appear like it's uh, more evenly lit which is what HDR is high dynamic range and you'll see once it's done this that we'll get a few different things that we can do a few options we can play with and so we're going to leave it in tone mapping so if you have a look on the top here you've got a choice between tone mapping or exposure fusion and um, you'll see with exposure fusion a lot of uh, the options disappear um, and you, you won't get the, as good a result in my opinion so I like to click on tone mapping you can see already that the image looks good um, I'm just going to go hit the default so you can see what the default setting is. And that sort of puts all the sliders into a default position. Now what you can do is you can sort of go through and pick different things out uh, from the presets. Um, and this is, you know, surreal. It's way overdone. Vibrant. So let's just go back up. I'm just going to pick um, default for now. And we're going to do all of the changes ourselves over here with the sliders. So you can see you can sort of slide these sliders around all over the place. Do whatever you like. Um, you can't break anything, you know, and uh, I think it's I think it's great software. I love the way that it works, and uh, you know, I like a bit of contrast to bring that black point right up. And to me now, that's starting to look pretty good. Temperature, there we go. So you can see you just move these sliders around and go crazy. You, like I said, you can't break anything, so you may as well try and. Uh, Try and get it looking the way that you want it to. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. 
all I do now is hit the apply button and it's going to now tone map those eight files into one image and it's called a tone mapped image and as soon as that's done it'll give me a couple of other options that I'll just quickly show you there we go and so you see it's got finishing touches and you can choose you know increase contrast color or sharpening I rarely do anything here but let's just pick medium sharpening done and there you go there's a tone mapped image you can see it's a lot uh, better than what we had before and you know this is what HDR software does so let's close that I'm not going to save that and let's now go to load single photo because I think it's good to see how using a single photo uh, will will work uh, just so you get an idea let's take the seventh exposure there we go now, the reason I'm using the seventh exposure by the way is I know it's a bit brighter and it's because if you push the shadows too far in an image you'll see that you'll start to get a lot of noise and yucky stuff happening so I tend to try and get one of the brighter images so you can see this one here um, you can see the detail in the shadows nothing too crazy I click the tone map button and it now takes me to the same screen where I can sort of pick a predetermined preset or I can just go to default and then make my own changes if I want same thing just sort of move things around until you're happy you know Oh, I really like that. And this is, a, this is a single exposure. So this shows you that if you are handheld, sometimes it's best not to worry about trying to align things. Just grab one exposure and uh, and process it. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit apply. It's going to do the same thing. It'll give me the same choices. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'm typically if the only thing I'll do at this point usually is a bit of sharpening. Now, if you do want to learn more about HDR uh, or you want to try the software, like I said, use the link down below. Uh, you'll go to the uh, get a, a free download rather and it's a trial version it does put watermarks on your image so you're going to see that uh, you'll have a Photomatix watermark but if you decide you want to buy it you can use the code on three legs including the number three on three legs or one word and you'll save 15 percent also down below in the description I'll have a link to my free HDR tutorial it's pretty comprehensive and uh, I've had a lot of good feedback. I've had thousands of people uh, use it. It's a very popular page on my website. Go there, check it out, and uh, it'll help you process your HDR. Hopefully that's helped you, and uh, enjoy your uh, HDR experience. Cheers. Cheers.